Hello and welcome to the first episode of Candidates Cards on the Table, the series that wants to cut through the emotion and polarization of politics and personality in Colombia in 2018 to focus on the proposals put forth by the five principal presidential candidates, Ivan Duque, Gustavo Petro, Herman Vargas Lleras, Sergio Fajardo and Humberto de la Calle. To help us do this are the fabulous students of international relations here at Universidad del Norte. The idea of the show is very simple. Each week, the panel is going to present the proposals of each candidate in relation to a particular theme, and then very quickly mention one aspect which they find positive, one aspect which, which they find negative to each of the candidates' proposals. The catch is that this will be done without any mention of the candidates' names. Um, this will be revealed at the end of the show, or sometimes it might be left up to you, the viewers, to establish. All we are interested in are the proposals. This week, we are going to focus on uh, the proposals related to the economy. And the first mystery candidate's proposals are presented here by Alejandro. Hello, everybody. Our first candidate aims to increase the economy by an average of 5% each year through the following proposals. Number one, more incentives for investment and growth in the areas most affected by the conflict. Two, more investment in social infrastructure. Three, promotion of ecotourism to make the most of Colombia's biodiversity. Four, maximizing the potential of agriculture. Five, support for small and medium-sized businesses with lower tax rates. Six, elimination of certain tax exemptions and progressive tariffs for the highest earning taxpayers. Seven, ensuring subsidies go to those who really need them. Eight, encouraging internal production by applying full tariffs to, fu to finish imports. And number nine, a strict punishment for tax avoidance. Well, one negative point of this proposal is that it's a little overambitious to aim for a 5% increase in each year, but positively we can say that it promotes the better wealth distribu distribution in among the less developed sectors, which we can say is feasible and it can be done. Hello everyone, our second candidate wants a more productive economy for our country, and he proposes more informal labor and qualifications for Colombians to ensure that less people depend on state subsidies. Focus on entrepreneurship in order to strengthen small and medium-sized businesses. The creation of a public bank to give credit to those who have been denied by the banks and are forced to use informal money lenders. More education and scientific formation to encourage more exports of varied goods and services to avoid dependence on just one product. Development of tourism in the country, with a focus on sustainable, historical, cultural, and business-based tourism, with the benefits going directly to the local communities. And lastly, fracking will not be permitted, nor will open pit mining of gold. Contracts for the extraction of gold will not be renewed, and any ventures with affect access to water or food of local communities will not be permitted. One negative thing, economically speaking, is that saying no to fracking will, pos will reduce our possible foreign revenue. And what positive thing to remark is that this diversification of the economy will reduce our dependence on oil. Hello everybody. Uh, our third candidate also wants the economy to grow by 5% and he proposes First, promotion of private investment, uh, entrepreneurship, and formal labor. Less taxes for businesses and improving how the end is run to avoid contraband. Second, push for greater infrastructure and support for the mining and the energy sectors to work on the development of the country. Likewise, attempt uh, to vary the economy by focusing on tourism, uh, agriculture and fishing, and export industries. Third, a pension reform and a revision uh, of spending on education and health. And fourth, improvement in the efficiency of the state, attempt to limit uh, state spending and to cut out unnecessary spending as well as uh, the over-regulation which exists in the country. Here, one negative aspect would be that uh, growing the economy by 5% and making the economy more efficient will take more than four years. And a positive one is that it aims to spend public resources efficiently. Hello everyone, our fourth candidate aims to increase productivity with an emphasis on regional development. He proposes 
updating, diversifying and increasing the efficiency of Colombian production, creating 1.5 million jobs, redirecting resources lost to corruption towards education, culture, science and technology, transport infrastructure like 4G roads, recovery of the rail network and construction of level 3 roads, building more schools, boosting energy infrastructure, more subsidized housing and access to credit for household. Invest in the rural economy with irrigation districts, land adoption, rural education and plans for competitive agriculture and fishing. Seven strategic projects in the areas of biotechnology, ecotourism, renewable energies and the digital economy, cultural industry, craft, agricultural industry and sustainable cities. Well, a negative thing is that these proposals are highly dependent on the public spending, which means more taxes. But a posi positive thing is that this candidate wants to modernize the economy. Hello everyone, this final candidate aims to increase the productivity of the economy specifically by reducing the taxes and other limitations for co some companies. Uh, the principal proposals include uh, the reduction of taxes in the private sector to the recommended OECD tax rate of 27 to 28%, the stricter measures against tax evasion to, pack, to pay the reduction of tax rates, the more variety export to reduce dependence on current top 15 exports, uh, to encourage more participation in the stock exchange, no more free trade agreements but maintain alignment with the international system, the reform of the state to make it more efficient and less expensive, and five-year tax exception of entrepreneurs. So a negative point here is that the reduction of taxes, taxes rates is something ambitious. Uh, also there is no mention of poverty through these proposals, which could increase human capital. Uh, a more positive point is that they want to make the economy more uh, attractive to investors, which is needed, so that would be a very good point. Okay, Brandon, thanks a lot for that. So we've heard the proposals of all of the candidates on the economy, and we've heard some good things and some bad things about each of those proposals. The only thing that's left to do is to find out the identity of each of the candidates. So Alejandro, you told us about the first candidate. Can you please let us know who that candidate is? Um, well, we've seen the proposal, and now we're gonna see who they belong to. So the first candidate would be Humberto de la Calle. All right, thank you, Alejandro. Uh, Juliana? You gave us the proposals for our second candidate, so can you please tell us who that candidate is? Well, our second candidate was Gustavo Petro of Colombia Humana. Um, okay, Renel, what about our third candidate? Uh, well, our third candidate was Germán Vargas Lleras. Okay, excellent. Gabriela, our fourth candidate? The fourth candidate was Sergio Fajardo de la Coalición Colombia. Okay, excellent. So, for this mere formality, Brandon, your candidate is? So, the candidate number five is Ivan Duque from Centro Democrático. Okay, thanks a lot, Brandon, and thanks a lot to all our participants today, and thanks a lot to any of our viewers here. Um, that's the first episode of Candidates Cards on the Table. Please keep an eye out for future episodes. In our next episode, we're going to be dealing with proposals related to the health system. So, please also keep an eye out for the hashtag, Candidates Cards on the Table. Less emotion, more information. Thank you.